Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to cover a question that I am asked about all the time, and it's how to pick the correct weight or know when you need to go up and weight in the gym. So I'm standing here today in front of my beloved rack of dumbbells here to show you a great example of this. And so a lot of people overthink picking the right weight in the gym. And so I wanna give you all this tough love reminder that most of you are probably underloading yourself and or overshooting yourself. And you need to figure out which person you are, the person who underestimates how hard something is or the person who's trying to max out on everything they do and adjust from there. So first, you gotta get honest with yourself and say, okay, this is the kind of person I am. This is how I tend to pick my weights in the gym. But let's start with some examples with the dumbbells here today. So I'm gonna use examples for accessory workouts, especially today, not necessarily the barbell, but the same and similar rules apply. So say I wanted to go to the gym today and I wanted to do shoulder presses, right? We're gonna do standing dumbbell shoulder presses. And so say that I I am gonna start with these 12 and a halfs, right? 12 and a half sounds pretty good. It's in between a 10 and a 15. I'm not quite ready for that big jump. And I'm going and I have three sets of 10. That's my example today, I have three sets of 10. And I'm going and I'm doing my dumbbell shoulder presses. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Those are a little quick and sloppy, but you get the point. So I get to 10 and I think to myself, it felt like weight, but it wasn't anything like that. And I can ask myself, how many reps did I really have left in my tank, right? How many more reps could I have done? That's something called reps in a reserve. And it correlates really well to something called rating of perceived exertion, which is your RPE scale. And a scale of one to 10 of how hard that lift was. So say the lift was a six for me, six out of 10 on the scale, which means that I probably could have done four more reps if I needed to, maybe five and I could have kept going. And so what we wanna do is we wanna find a weight that is a little bit closer to that seven to eight, or maybe even a nine range, depending on the accessory movement that we're doing. But generally with our, most of our barbell training, unless we're doing heavy singles, peaking, we're gonna stick in that seven, eight range, which means that we probably have two to three reps left in the tank in every exercise we're doing. There's a common misconception that you should go to absolute failure on every single set that you do in the gym, but that's not true. We wanna leave a little bit left in the tank, and research even shows that people who train to failure versus a little bit below it, those who do a little bit below it do just as well, if not better in response to the training in the gym. So you don't need to go all out in every single lift. So back to my 12 and a half. Say that I went and I said, okay, I have no idea how many reps I could do left in the tank. And so I want to do another set and I keep going and I get 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. I definitely know by this point that I need to be going up in weight. So I'm going to put those back. For many of you, when you're doing accessory workouts in the gym, these smaller weights, you might need to make smaller jumps. So I might jump to a 15, but then they start making five pound jumps as you progress more within your training. And so what I wanna do is simply, okay, that was my first set and I did three by 10 and it was like an RPE six. So I definitely need to go up and weight in my next set. So let me go to the next weights up. I'm gonna then grab these 15s. Again, I'm using this all for demonstration purposes and take these and do my standing shoulder presses. So I'm getting in position, I'm doing my presses, And that felt pretty good. Okay, let's say I did that, I feel pretty good, and I feel like, okay, I was probably about a seven there. I bumped me up from a six to a seven. So that's pretty good, that's pretty close to the target, right? And then I can stay there for the rest of my sets and maintain that seven, but maybe that still felt like a six and it felt too easy or it felt like a seven and I'm trying to hit eight, so I wanna go up. So my next set, I go ahead and grab the 20s. There's no seven and a half in my gym. It's kind of a big jump, but I wanna see what I can do. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna do my sets. Ooh, and you know what? That was a nine for me. Uh-oh, what do I do now? And so with that, what you could do is if there's a smaller set of weights, you can bump back down, or you can go to the lighter weights where you had that eight that you needed and you seven to get an eight that you needed and do a couple more reps to hit that target, whatever you need to do. But that's a great way to pick your weight. So if you overshoot, you can simply back back down and you might say, oh, that was a nine and I really could only get maybe one, maybe two reps left if I absolutely had to and go down in weight for the next set, depending on the target. Or if you're doing lighter weights and you feel like, okay, I could do a million more. What I like to tell clients is take yourself all the way to failure to learn what that feels like and think, okay, well, I should only be able to do two or three reps less than that. How much weight would I need to get there? And kind of work up in the weight stack until you get to that point. Once you figure it out for your standard lifts, 
it's going to be a lot easier because every week over time, you're gonna know what you started with that last week. And you could just start there in your first set. So say it's the next week, and I knew that these 20 pound dumbbells were just a little too heavy for me last week. I'm gonna start back with my 15s. And hopefully if I'm getting stronger and progressing with time, my 15s might feel easier on that first set. And I go back and I grab my 20s and I'm stronger than this week. So when I go and I do my second set with the 20 pound dumbbells, my RPE ends up being in that eight target. And I know, okay, one, my body adapted, I'm stronger, so I'm more capable this week. So I'm able to progress that load, right? Progressive loading happens in response to our strength. It doesn't force our strength. And so I'm able to do more weight. And so then I'll do 20 for my next two sets. And the next week, I know I have to start at 20. And then depending on how I feel, I might stay at 20 for all of those sets. I may have to go up a rep or two on the sets if I'm not ready to jump up weight or whatever I need to do. And so that is one of my favorite ways for figuring out the perfect weight that you need to lift in the gym. So to recap and give you a summary, I like using something called RPE or ratings of exertion. And it correlates to something called reps and reserve and how many reps you have left in the tank. So we really want that sweet spot of an RPE of about seven, eight on most of our lifts. And if you're following a program, you might have a nine or a six here and there, but that's specific to the coach and the goals and the outcomes of that training. But for most of you hitting a seven to eight, is going to be a great sweet spot. From there, that correlates to about two to three reps left in the tank, which means that if you absolutely had to go to failure, it's about as many reps as you would have gone and left or how hard that felt to you on a scale of one to 10. So a seven or eight out of 10. When using the RPE scale, it's a scale that takes time. So you're going to be really variable, but then over time, you're gonna get closer to getting a lot better at knowing how you feel. So if you know in the beginning that you're someone who tends to overestimate or underestimate, just simply use that to gauge yourself. If you need to think about an eight as a nine or an eight as a seven to either push yourself or hold yourself back, it's probably okay to start with. Just know what that feels like to you because it's relative entirely to you. So when you're picking your weight in the gym, just pick a weight. Pick a weight and ask yourself, how hard was that? And can I do more and should it feel harder? And go up and wait. And it's okay if you don't get it perfect on all of your sets and you end up only having two good sets. So you need to do an extra set to make up for one that was too easier. But once you figure that out the first week of a training program or a training block, you're able to simply add weight from that over time and know where you need to start back up. And it's super simple. So if you're starting a new exercise or a new training phase and you don't know what exercise to pick, that's totally okay. Just do an exercise, ask yourself how hard that felt on a scale of one to 10. And if you don't know what true failure feels like, Take an exercise to failure and show yourself what a 10 feels like so that you have a better gauge of what a seven or eight is going to feel like. Now, if you're looking for a training program that does this for you, the list method is perfect for you. In the list method, I program all of your exercise, your reps, your sets, I give you ranges so you can work within that. So if you need to do a few more, a few less, depending on the weight that you have that. And it also gives you RPE prescription. And if you work with my begin program, we work you through RPE progressions to get you more comfortable and confident before you move into light. If you need anything light, Pro, we have these all prescribed for you based on the intensity and the desired outcomes of the days of that performance and the training adaptations we want you to have. Otherwise, if you're interested in learning more information on RPE, RIR, programming your own training, loading your weight, picking your weights, and just making your own workouts, check out my ebook training, which breaks down the science of training and lifting for you, as well as gives you a DIY or build it yourself workout template if you're not quite ready for something like this method, but you want this information to help translate in the gym the information that you need to help make you stronger and smarter. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and leave us a comment and let us know something that you learned. And if you found this helpful, make sure you subscribe and we will catch you on the next video.